It's really crazy to think about, but Brock Lesnar's second run with WWE has lasted almost six years now. Six years is how long the second run has been. Just think about that. His first run was about two years. So he's tripled the length of time with the second run, be it as a part-time performer, so the total work between the first one and the second run is probably equivalent, but in terms of overall length of time, it is am amazing how quickly that time does go by and how much time it's been. And granted, I am not the biggest fan of Brock Lesnar. Granted, some of you will believe because he ended the Undertaker streak at WrestleMania 30 and it still bothers me a little bit to this day and I still think it was a stupid decision, did then, still do now, and perhaps even more so, that no matter what, when it comes to Brock Lesnar, I'm just going to crap on everything. Which isn't true, but there is frankly plenty for me to crap on. But now we get to WrestleMania 34. And what is starting to shape up, for all intents and purposes, to possibly be Brock Lesnar's last match with WWE in this run at least. And to that, I say, good riddance. Six years has been enough. Six years has probably been one or two years too damn long. I know we've still got those Brockheads out there that think he's some big massive star and some big fucking money-making machine for the WWE. But if we are really keeping it real, Brock Lesnar's run, especially over the past year, outside of a couple of the matches that you're going to point to and say those are great and awesome, so much of what he's done, and just in general to me, over the past six years, has been largely underwhelming. It was a great get for the WWE to bring him back, because eight years later, it was time. It was time for him, it was time for the company, it was time for the fans. It was one of those things, it was right, and they had to do it. And unfortunately, you saw how much the times had changed between the 2003-2004 version of WWE and the 2012 version of WWE, where they bring Brock Lesnar in as former multiple-time world champion for the company, UFC heavyweight champion, all the other accolades that he's had, and legit and non-legit fighting over the years, and his first pay-per-view match back at Extreme Rules 2012, he's getting jobbed out to John fucking Cena. Like, to me, it was at that point in time, there was never going to be a true and full recovery in my mind. Because you get this dude... And this is a big deal. And it was a big deal. Because there were many people that, based off of the way the relationship had ended almost a decade earlier, thought that this guy may never come back to WWE. And thought that this was going to be a fantasy. Well, the fantasy had come to life, and the WWE immediately crapped on it. It was just all types of things that reminded you that when shit gets to get, the WWE is going to do their business a certain way, whether it is good business or not. And we all have our complaints about the company in that respect. But I've just worn tired of the same basic Brock Lesnar buildup, the same Brock Lesnar entrance every couple of weeks when he's bothering to show up, the same damn Paul Heyman promo that everybody kisses ass to the moon of. Yes, Heyman is the best talker in the business today. Yes, he is a phenomenal mouthpiece. There is no question, but how many times do I have to hear the same themes and the same damn promos before that crap does start to eventually get a little old? And as far as this whole thing about Brock being this massive megastar, bullshit. If he was such a freaking massive megastar, then WrestleMania 34 would have long since been sold out. And last time I checked, as of the time I was getting ready to record this, the biggest show of the year still hadn't sold out yet. Granted, not a ton of seats still available, but still not a sellout. Stadium or not, 70,000 plus people or not in the Superdome, the simple fact of the matter is, he's not that big of a needle mover for the company. 
He never has been for the company. And he's not this huge money-making machine, and it's about time they stop pretending like it is. Especially with the four, five, six, whatever the fuck million dollars they're paying him a year. He's just not a big needle mover. Those half-empty Raw arenas a few months back when Brock Lesnar was on television, you can't just blame Roman Reigns for that. While some surely want to. The fact is, Brock has had some entertaining matches over the past couple of years, that is true. But his character is pretty stale, and I understand we like the big fight feeling, but I've always find it kind of ironic how a community full of people that take the in-ring action so seriously actually look up to Brock Lesnar as some type of Pied Piper hero for them as the big fight feel type of guy, when basically his moves are stomp around, suplex, F5. But y'all shit on Roman and Cena and others when they at least try to do other shit than that. And when you look at Lesnar now, this universal title reign, we've gotten to the point now where I'm mercifully just waiting for it to be over so at least that way there could be a full-time champ again in Roman Reigns. And it's so bad that I want Roman Reigns to win that damn strap from him. And if you're going to say, well, that was WWE's whole mission, and then I say mission not accomplished because I still don't like Roman Reigns. It is just more a result of disliking Brock Lesnar even more. All the money this company spends on him, and where is the real return on the investment? Who has he helped elevate? Who has he made a truly bigger deal? Roman Reigns is more of a kingmaker and a star maker for that company that Brock Lesnar has been, and that's the damn truth. Giving him the streak at WrestleMania 30, just so that way four years later, both of them, both Lesnar and Taker, are still wrestling at Mania is freaking stupid. And beyond all else, even if you are a Lesnar fan, and even if you've enjoyed his run, more power to you. The simple truth of the matter is it's time good riddance because that is a lot of money wasted for no real return. Because if you try to envision the next year for Brock Lesnar in WWE, what does he actually realistically have on the landscape, on the horizon, that interests you in any way, shape, or form. And if you are going to say Finn Balor and Daniel Bryan, please do all that you can to kick yourself square in the nuts, and if you can't reach that, then kick yourself square in the fucking ass. That's what we're resorting to, is hoping for matches with Finn Balor and Daniel Bryan, and even if I gave you those two, that's what? three months and three total appearances to get to one match with Finn, three months and three to four appearances to get to one match, maybe at SummerSlam with Daniel Bryan, and then what? You still have nothing for him on the frickin' horizon. It's cool while it lasted, I suppose. And it was a necessary thing, and I'm glad the WWE did it, and they got as much as they felt like they got out of Brock Lesnar. But it is time to admit that six years later, the act has gotten stale, the act has gotten old, it is time for him to go. Good riddance, I say. I hope Sunday is Brock Lesnar's last match with WWE, because frankly, I don't care to see another one. <laughs>